Uh, hello, I am Dr. Sachin Bhosle. I am Senior Consultant Orthopedic Surgeon at Fortis Hospitals Group based in Mulund, Mumbai. Arthroplasty means joint replacements and uh, arthroplasty has been happening since almost last 50-60 years worldwide. Uh, we are mostly doing knee and hip replacements and lots of new things have come up in arthroplasty in the last decade or two, especially in the last five years or so. Uh, what has got better? Is it our training or is it just the type of setups where we are doing the arthroplasty? It's much more than that. Certainly, our training has got better. Our surgical technique has improved. Our hospital set, set up operation theater and rehabilitation care has also improved. But what has mainly got better is the materials which are going into the arthroplasty. Previously, we used to have standard, standard cobalt chrome and titanium processes. Now we are getting more and more carbon fiber and ceramic processes, which makes them long lasting and the results become predictable. Second thing is the technique which we, we do it. We used to use standard mechanical gadgets like uh, Mason uses to make a building. Uh, but now, first computers came into the picture helping us to do the operation in a more precise way. Then we started doing patient specific instrumentation for doing knee replacements and hip replacements. And now we have moved into robotics. So the joint replacement has become really much more predictable and much better. Deformity correction has been going on since a long time. Actually, the name orthopedics itself comes from a Latin word, word which means a straight child, correcting a deformity for the child. So deformity correction is as ancient as that. The techniques involved, something is bent, we have to cut the bone and straighten it out. That's known as deformity correction. In the olden days, we used to cut the bone, put a metal rod or plate on it and straighten it out. Then Elizarov, the Russian scientist, surgeon, came up with a novel way of doing a gradual deformity correction by using a ring fixator where he used certain types of frame and screws were turned a millimeter per day to correct the deformity. Today we have got such fixators which we can fix on a child or adult's leg and we can feed the information in a computer and the computer tells us exactly how to move the screws, how to turn the bolt, to do a six axis correction, to do a precise computerized deformity correction. So complex trauma is something which we all hear for a long time that somebody got into a car accident, had multiple injuries, could not survive. Okay, Often the deaths are in the first hour, which we call it a golden hour. So what has really changed? in complex trauma is first our understanding of what happens to people in a complex traumatized situation has improved. People can be shifted after stabilizing to a center of excellence, but the team which attends the person at the site of the trauma is very important. They have to undergo a specific training. That's the initial golden hour. After they get to the specialized center, our team takes over and we prioritize between damage control and definitive management. Often patients, we have to stabilize for the first day or so by treating their multiple injuries in the intensive care unit. That is where the question of having a good setup where a tertiary care center is really useful in a complicated trauma where patient can be stabilized for the first day or so and then the definitive fixation of fractures or any other injury can take place. This does save lives. Recently, uh, we had uh, three ladies actually who were in a bad car accident. Uh, as it happens, it happened on Saturday afternoon, all of them in their 70s, they had their share of medical problems and they were, all three of them were brought to our casualty. Each of them had at least 
one or two long bone fractures which which were compound they had chest trauma they had abdominal trauma they had spinal trauma and we managed to first stabilize them in the icu next day sunday we took them all to theater and further stabilized them stabilized all the fractures in single go and they could be sent home within week or 10 days that's one case another interesting case is uh, something which i had myself not thought can be done we do hip replacements they last 30 40 years quite easily in certain people but there was this lady who came from uh, one of the african countries she came with ulcers on both her hips she had something known as sickle cell disease in sickle cell disease people get lots of musculoskeletal pain they start using painkillers and central intravenous drugs and get addiction addicted to these substances she used to take that lie down developed bed sores on both the hips her both hip joints had no skin on that they were out in addition to that she had sickle cell disease so both her hip joints were infected and become arthritic she actually needed hip replacements but with this huge ulcers craters on the hip nobody could offer her a hip replacement i had myself not seen a case like that we built up a team with a plastic surgeon and we first got a plastic surgical flap that is we borrowed a skin from somewhere else and took it to the hip joint covered both the hip joints said to her that okay now you should be out of sepsis and infections please go back home i don't think we'll ever be able to offer you hip replacements because you cannot put a artificial joint in presence of infection but in a year's time she came back her ulcers were healed skin grafts were nice and well healed no sign of any infection and i agreed to do a hip replacement to do a hip replacement where there is no normal anatomy joint is arthritic is a huge challenge i had to uh, get the help of my plastic surgeon colleague again lift off the skin flap he had done for the hip then replace the hip there and come out and put the skin flap back on that is one of the most challenging cases i have ever done and i don't think there are any reported like that thank you